Jason, so good to check in with you because it does look like bookings are solid and the guidance obviously you can't argue with. We're trying to square it with the, some of the capacity moves we've seen from some of the airlines, for example. Is there a reason to believe there'll be a pass-through? Well, first, really great to be here, Carl, and, th and really thanks for having me. I think there are much different dynamics than what we're seeing in hotel and airline as, as we don't really have the business consumer. So ours is really kind of pure leisure. Uh, and I think when you kind of consider uh, what we're seeing in terms of this acceleration, a lot of it's driven by the value gap between land-based vacation, which is resulting in accelerated um, um, demand for both on the ticket side as well as on the onboard side. Are you seeing, Jason, any behavioral changes just, just in recent weeks here between the U.S. and Europe and global customers because of what's happening, for instance, in Israel? Yeah. Well, you know, you know, fortunately, we have really great visibility into our, our customer. We have about 130,000 people sailing with us right now. And when, you know, we, you know, we take 30, 40, 50,000 bookings a day. So, so we have great visibility in terms of what we're seeing. And so, so far, we're not really seeing any change in behavior as relates to the, you know, the, the horrific situation that's happening uh, in, in Israel. What we actually see is just continued strength and demand and very similar trends uh, to what we, we were seeing um, you know, pre this, uh, this war that's happening in Israel. I, yeah, I was, I was asking because I was talking to Stephen Schur this morning at Hertz, and he was saying that he thinks that the, the holiday season is going to be strong domestically in the U.S., that just with, with, when stuff happens around the world that's scary, then people do stay closer to home. You're not saying that. At, at, at this point, we're not. Now, we're at the end of our European season, um, so our Europe season really picks up in May of next year in terms of our deployment. Um, so just in terms of timing, most of our focus is our guests are either going to be Americans um, or Europeans in the Caribbean um, or they're going to be uh, people from Australia going to cruises in Australia and New Zealand. So we're not really um, kind of in that zone of where this conflict would impact us at this point in time. Yeah, that's been some of the, 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 the threads that some of the analysts have picked up in is over-indexing on shorter trips to the Caribbean. Is that considered sort of a, a trump card, so to speak, at least at the moment? Yeah, well, I, I, we, we certainly have benefited by having more of our product in the Caribbean and having more of our product in the short product. Um, some of that is because of the, the drivable market, our guests being able to drive closer. But we also have a unique set of assets, um, you know, besides that our ships are extremely differentiated versus our, our competitors. But we also have a lot of private destinations, one of which is Perfect Day at Coco Cay, which, you know, has the tallest water slide in North America mm -hmm. and has an incredible thrill side and chill side that is drawing a lot of first to cruise as well as first to brand.